Oh, I love you too, Lily. God, I'm so alone. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Megamon here, and welcome to another anime talk. Today, we are talking about the world God only knows in celebration of it having a third season, which was actually just released today on Crunchyroll. You can actually find the entire series on Crunchyroll. So, today we are again talking about the world God only knows. This is a harem, and it's actually one of my favorite animes ever. Um, I don't know why, but it has become one of my favorite animes, so today I am going to be doing this in a bit more organized fashion. First of all, how I came about this anime. Literally, I found it through looking on YouTube, and I pre pretty much all I did was uh, I heard of the series from somewhere, and I needed, and I just needed something to watch, so... I looked up the opening and said, Oh my god, this looks fucking amazing. So I decided to go in, well, of course, watch it on Crunchyroll. And I was amazed. I watched the entire series in one day. It was that cool. All I watched both second, uh, first and second seasons, and immediately after that I started reading the manga. And this should just show you how much I really do enjoy the series. It's funny, although the animation isn't too good, and... Although the subject matter is a little iffy to me personally, I still love it to hell. Uh, to hell. But anyways, let's get on with this talk by starting off with the animation. The animation was done by Studio Manglobe, and well, Studio Manglobe has done such works as Dead Man Wonderland, uh, Z Zentai, the Zentai, Dead Man Wonderland, Zentai Karin Children, and not Psychic Squad. No, uh, Zentai Karin Children uh, with Kyosuke, the most recent one. And then they also did. Samurai Shampoo, I believe. Okay, so the animation is actually the worst thing about this show. It stays consistently off model. Of course, it's supposed to go along with the manga, but unfortunately, not staying on model also kind of means you're trying to fiddle around with styles, which are good styles. I like how it does jump around to style to style. The problem is, is keeping the animation consistent is, to me, a top most priority and because sometimes it just looks bad and also the colors are extremely flat and there's not a whole lot of well fluorescence to it i don't know how to describe it the colors are flat and there's not a whole lot of it going around there's a lot of good lighting but it doesn't really hit help any but it doesn't really help anything subdue itself i don't know how to uh, i don't really know how to say it it's most everything pops out too much i guess i could say that and so it's the animation is the most subpar thing, but it's actually not super duper bad. It's just me personally griping and taking things from Holton Reviews, so I could make this sound a little bit more professional. And so the next thing would be the story. The story is about Kema Katsuragi, a typical gamer geek, which is actually one of my most favorite characters, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, ba uh, basically, he's just this huge visual novel gamer, which you saw me playing in the beginning of the video. A visual novel is pretty much a dating sim. You're trying to woo a lady through a computer by clicking different options, and... Nah. I, I like visual novels, but this guy's like somehow a god of it. He can predict every single outcome each answer will provide, and it's like, what? I don't understand, but it's hilarious that way. Anyways, he gets a call from the demon world, which he signs a contract from the demon world accidentally when he gets an email, and then Elsie comes along, which, by the way, is the most fucking adorable thing in my uh, I've ever seen in my entire life. So cute! <laughs> this is how you do Moe right. She is the perfect definition of Moe, because she's so fucking adorable. I want an Elsie doll. <laughs> And he has, and basically, contract stated that he has to capture real life girls, and that's kind of bad because he hasn't actually captured real life girls, only girls in video games. And his motivation is that he will die if he doesn't. So there's that, and that's pretty much it in terms of story. There's not much into it. It's not exactly a harem either. It's a complete romantic comedy, because since he's going from one group to another, and all of them are not on him at once. 
Although I probably put in the description, I'm only going over the first season, so I don't have to, because I've watched the second season, but I'm going to save that for later. But the first, uh, in the first season, you he has to capture a total of four girls. Uh, I'm not, I don't remember their names besides one, which is the pink-haired one called Cannon. And yeah, there's an athletic one, there's a Sundere, there's the idol, and then there's the librarian. Li librarian? Librarian. Bleh. Librarian. So, he has to capture all four of these girls in the course of 12 episodes. And now we move on to the characters. The characters, the only important ones, are Kama Katsuragi, which is uh, actually voiced by a very talented person. I don't know who his name is, but he's very talented. He's able to voice Kama as very cool and calm-headed, but also very crazy. Although Kama is normally looked at, and can be normally looked at, as someone that doesn't talk a whole lot and is very serious, he actually has a very creative and crazy mind. And able to get that across is very... and able to get... and able to, and to be able to get across the craziness that goes in Kama's mind and keep a calm, cool demeanor in other parts is very well done. And Elsie, of course I talked about her, she is... Moe. She is the definition of Moe to me, this is how you do it right. And she's just so fucking adorable. <laughs> I don't have much to say. She's actually pretty damn useless in this show. But uh, Kema and Elsie shares very, very good chemistry together. And they make very funny scenes. So, yeah. This is one of the most funny things I've ever seen in my entire life. But it's also able to be very serious about its romance. Which I enjoy. And having a nice balance with that definitely is a very good thing, but I think what helped it the most was the soundtrack, being able to be very happy and lighthearted to very soothing and calm. The soundtrack is actually very huge, and I do own the soundtrack. It's just that some of the songs are a little bit samey. There's little tiny subtle variations in each song according to each capture or what mood it is, but it's generally the same. I do like this little subtle differences, but this definitely works better for video games rather than anime, so yeah. So with all that all reviewing out of the way, what do I personally feel about The World God Only Knows? The World God Only Knows is not only funny, it is one of the best shows I have watched with the sheer balance and hilarity and commentary it puts on everyday harems or romances and even video game life in general. Being able to put all that together and Take it so funny. I don't. I can't say much about it. It. It's just very funny. And again, making fun of visual novels and gamers and geeks at the same time, while of course appealing to them, is very interesting. Another thing that I like about the show is that it is very accurate to the manga, almost page by page. I'd say that it is the best. It's one of the better uh, manga to anime adaptations. Unfortunately, they do screw around with the filler a little bit. Uh, making one of the filler episode, making the last episode, which was a filler pay, uh, which was filler in between the first and second capture, made it the last episode. Which, by the way, Kama looks like the angry video game nerd when he in that last episode, if you know where to look. But, anyways, I think I blabbed on enough about my kind of opinions about it. So. Without further ado, this has been my experimental anime talk because I've never actually done this organized before. Again, I'm just trying to get into the mood of reviewing. But anyways, guys, I'll see you guys later.